Hey, God bless you all. Um, I'm still doing my, if you see my video right before this one, I'm doing my study in Genesis. And something has opened my eyes, y'all, during my study that the, the, the uh, Holy Spirit, the Trinity, the Trinity was not just in the New Testament. It goes back to the creation of day one, the Trinity, God's attributes of the Trinity and the creation. Now, I tell you guys to write this stuff down. I don't have a lot of followers and that's, that's, Hey, that's okay. Those of you that are here on my channel, my channel's pretty new. Get to studying. I don't care if it's five of y'all. I mean, I do care, but if it's just five of you that's actually studying God's word, then get into it. Get into it. Hopefully everybody's doing it. But if it's just three, four, five of y'all following along, then praise God, right? Do it. And I'm here to help you. Okay. So, as I say to write this down, because if you go, as we get into the book of Deuteronomy, which will be coming up um, in 27, you know, as the children of Israel were going into the promised land, they were, they, God told them to write down his word on a giant whitewashed stone so that they would not forget what, you know, to do what the word says. Okay. God commanded them to write this down, write my word down. You may think you know it, you may, and good to memorize it. Great, he wants you to memorize it. But he said, write it down so that it's in your face, always to look at. Okay, the eyes take in a lot, okay? You know what kind of things the eyes can do to you. So God's word in 27, uh, 3, it says to write it down. So trust me, write it down, okay? And we're going to go into that um, when we're through with Genesis about the blessings and obedience and the curses that are on obedience. So we'll cut's coming up. But right now, let's go into the uh how the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, I mean, is is since the beginning of time. So write this down, y'all. I'm gonna try to back up so y'all can see it. All right, so God created all things in the heavens and the earth. Okay, we're in Genesis, right? So the word created. Uh, is used to describe activity only God can do. Okay, so the word created the act. The word created the world. Okay, and everything else. The word and only God can do that. So at a specific moment, God called something into existence that was not there. It did not exist. Okay, the Bible describes God's creation as formless, empty covered with darkness and you'll read that if you're studying along so there were not any planets in an orderly form or anything like that not like it is now it was dark void and lifeless okay so god used the power of his word to create and you can see the the trinity at work uh during the creation of all this jesus said i am the way the truth and the life Okay, so you can see um, the Trinity, which is the attributes of God at work in the creation. Okay, the Son is the powerful Word through whom God created all things. Jesus Christ, the Son, is the Word that God used to create all things, to speak it into existence. The beginning of John's gospel reveals Jesus Christ as the eternal word of God. You can read that in John 1, 3. I wrote that down there for you. Um, it tells us all things were made through him and without him, not anything made that was made. So the Holy Spirit also had an active role in creation. The Trinity here, y'all. He was pictured as hovering over creation, preserving and preparing it for God's further creative activity. The Hebrew word for spirit is ruach. I have that down there. Holy Spirit, ruach Hadesh is the Holy Spirit, but ruach is, is, the, Holy, is the Hebrew word for spirit. Okay. Um, also translated as word or, um, I mean, wind or breath. The Holy Spirit is wind or breath. And as you know, that was what was breathed uh, into Adam and Eve. <sighs> blown and blown in through the not from the you know through the through their nostrils from the breath of the Holy Spirit breathed life into Adam and Eve. 
okay? The three of them are at work here, y'all. The Trinity, which is God's attributes, okay? So the writer of Psalms describes the Spirit's role when he states, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath, the ra, of his mouth, all their hosts which is Psalms 33, 6. Okay. Um, the Holy Spirit continues to be involved in sustaining creation, which is Job 33, 4, and I wrote that down right there. The Holy Spirit still continues to be involved in sustaining creation. Okay. So God had specific reasons for creating the world, and God created the heavens and the earth as a visible expression of his glory, his majesty, and his power. And to receive, he, he, he also created the world to receive the glory and honor that he deserves. And he created it for us to provide us a place where his purpose and goals could, could be fulfilled through us, with us. So, isn't I, I just love it. I love it, y'all. You can go you can go from the back of the Bible all the way to the front and it's the same the same spirit. I mean, it's the same thing. Nothing changes. The Holy Spirit is at work. Jesus is back here working hard, you know what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit going at it. And all the way to the beginning of the of everything. All through it is the Trinity. The Trinity doesn't start back here in Matthew. It doesn't start back there. It starts in the beginning, at the beginning, in the beginning. The attributes of God, the Trinity, the word, the breath. Okay. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Can really get into studying and I'll tell you what, God will open your eyes to things that you that may seem to be like, why didn't I see that? Why didn't I already understand this? You know, God is opening eyes right now, y'all. We're in the last days. God's spirit is falling upon us like nothing else. Like somebody pouring water on our heads. God's spirit is falling on us and he's teaching. He's teaching. So take it and do what he said in Deuteronomy. Write it down. Write it down and get into it. Get into it. All right, I pray for each one of y'all. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, ask him to be. And um, and then and then get into his word. Get into his word. And, and I, I'll just run over this really quick. I told you in Deuteronomy, he said to write the word down. Study it. He's telling you to study it. Write it down so that you look at it all the time. And, and as you do that, he said to do that so you won't forget what the word says. Okay? And, and let me keep going. He goes into the blessing. So you read Deuteronomy, which is not there yet, but you can flip over there. Deuteronomy 28. He talks about all the blessings that he wants to give you for our obedience. Okay. Um, our baskets will be full, you know, um, he'll be with us when we come in. Um, he'll make our enemies who rise against us defeated before our face. And I'm telling you, he will establish you. I mean, he, there's just go on and on. You can read it, chapter 28. But, you know, I've heard somebody say, I got to say this. I'm saying I can explain this. And this is the Lord revealed this to me this morning. Okay. <laughs> and he had to he give it to me pretty clear. Uh, somebody, a lot of people say, well, the Lord won't let you handle more than you can take. Or won't let you take more than you can handle. And then some people don't believe that. And people do believe that. But let me tell you what it is. We have willpower. We have willpower. God gave it to you to use it. He gave it to us to use it. Okay. So when we're up against a battle and things like, my God, why is all this coming at me? Okay. He lets us fight our battle. Okay. And he wants you to stand up with his power and fight the power. He gives you power. Okay. He gives us power power but when we get to where we're reaching our hand out in battle but we can't reach anymore he comes in and takes over okay he comes in when we can't do any more of the battle he comes in and he finishes it okay and you're going to read that when in deuteronomy 
okay, chapter 28. Go find it yourself. Go read it and understand it. And then if you want to take a break from Genesis and go on, you can read the many, many curses that's in um, chapter 28 too for disobeying God's word. <laughs> that's why I said if you disobey God's word, correct it immediately. And the word of God tells you to do that too. Correct it ASAP. Repent. Do you, you know, people, I've got to tell you, I know people think, oh, once saved, always saved. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. That's you. I already told you that's not the case. That's just not the case. And that's not my opinion. That's a fact. And why are some Christians going to hell? Because they slip up, they sin, they fall, and they do not repent. You've got to repent. Okay. Now, this come out of the mouth of God. Okay. To me, you have to repent. And if there's things you may have done that you cannot remember, God remembers. Trust me, it's written down in the book of life. He remembers just because you forgot. He did not forget. So maybe say, Jesus, forgive me for what I just did. And then try to stop. And then say, Jesus, forgive me for things I can't remember that I did. Jesus, forgive me. Repentance. It's so important, y'all. Repent means to stop, change, and turn away from and tell him you're sorry and stop it. It's so important. I can't express to y'all in every video how important it is for repentance to take place. When you slip up, repent, repent, repent. Do it fast, okay? You do not want to go to sleep in your bed because you are not promised to wake up. You are not promised to wake up, okay? And if you fall to sleep in your unrepented sin, honey, listen to me, you may be the best person in the world, but your sin cannot, I repeat, cannot get into God's kingdom. It can't and it won't. So repent right away. Okay. And then there you go. And then go to Deuteronomy 28. And read about his many blessings that you get for doing what he asks you to do. Just do what he asks you to do. It's that simple. But please don't play around with these false teachings. He, the Bible calls it other doctrines, false teachings, false prophets. People telling you that once you're saved, that's it. You can go do whatever in the world you want to do because you repented and you're good to go. You can go do whatever you want to do now and go to heaven because that's a lie from Satan. I'm here to tell you that is a lie and I'm nobody big. I'm nobody special. My channel is very small and minute, but I'm here to tell you that that is a lie. Please listen to me. If you've done something, repent fast. And change it. Stop it. And really get into God's word, y'all. Really do it. Really do it. Study it. Get it into you and live it. Live it. All right. That's it. I think I've expressed it enough. But in Jesus' name, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, please ask him. Because that breath of life is not always going to be in you. Okay? We're going to lose our breath of life. And we're, when we move on, where are we going to go? We're going to go one or two places. Where are you going to go? So ask Jesus to be your savior. If you've never tried it out, try it out. He's nothing but good. He's nothing but love. Okay, he's help. He's love. He's life everlasting. Make him your savior and uh, go live for him. You do that by reading his word and filling up with it and listening to what his word says and doing what it says. You have to do it. Okay, be a doer. I guess I'm going to have to make a t-shirt somehow talking about being a doer. I keep saying doer a lot, don't I? I do got face masks down here in the comments, in the description. Y'all can go get one if you want to. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up with some kind of t-shirt that talks about being doers of God. Doers of Jesus. I'll figure it out. But that's what we are. We're doers. Absolutely. God wants doers. Yes, he does. All right. In Jesus' name, God bless each one of y'all. Go to study.